Um, well, first of all, I was I'm really thankful for our Notre Dame community that came out. It's our first sellout um, game since 2019 for a conference game. So I'm just really appreciative of the energy. The our fans just really they're they're just so amazing. Um, everywhere we go on campus on, in the community, they're just they just love this group. They embrace me and they embrace this group. So I'm just so grateful um, to have such an incredible atmosphere. Um, you know, unfortunately, fell short today. Um, but I know that it's part of it's part of our growth. It's part of our journey. And sometimes that journey, and you, when you lose in the way that we lost today, it's never easy. Um, but it's always something that you can take from it. And that's what we're going to do. Talked about it with the team. Um, as far as individual performances, I thought Maddie was amazing. Played every minute of this game. Um, gave me everything. Left it on the floor. Sony as well had to do a lot. You know, both of them had to require them to do a lot. Um, so I just you know really appreciate the way that they led us. Um, but defensively, we struggled scoring in the fourth quarter, six points, nine points. Um, and defensively, we, we had some lapses that really cost us the game. The offensive rebound, when we finally got the stop, um, not being able to capitalize in transition, I thought that was the difference. Um, I thought Dukes, um, their guards, their guard play, um, you could tell a little bit more mature as far as their leadership, um, as far as just having more experience at different points. Um, and again, hats off to them. But again, I just really, really, um, Really grateful for this turnout today and what it means for us. Um, and we will move on and we will bounce back. Neil, Neil you touched on it, but the fourth quarter specifically, 2 of 13 from the field, uh, six points. Uh, was it poor shot selection or was it something they were doing defensively or a combination of those? Yeah, things? you know what? It was um, <clears throat> some of those opportunities were in transition. We didn't get a chance to capitalize with those. Um, some of our half court shots, I thought they were good looks, a little bit short. Um, you know, we felt like we did a good job of finding the open person. We just didn't nail the shots. Um, we got some wide open looks. Um, I didn't feel like we got great offensive rebounding. I felt like we were one and done. Um, that really hurt us because we were, you know, we got wide open shots at points, but just didn't have anybody crashing. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, normally when you go on lows like that, you got to rely on your defense. And again, they only scored nine points, but every stop matters, every possession matters. What was the most frustrating part of that fourth quarter for you? A frustrating moment? Yeah, I mean, I just felt like, you know, offensively, we just could, again, couldn't find <laughs> the ball to go in the basket, to be honest. There was a bunch of plays back to back to back that we were just so close. Um, we just couldn't get over that hump. And I felt like even though it was a one-point game, and energetically, if we had made, I think it was a basket transition or one of our shots, I thought the, the, it was going to explode going up. Um, so that's what I was wait, waiting on. Um, but, yeah, you know, we did, again, two for 13, that's tough. At 55-52, what was kind of the play design there? A little bit, obviously, going quick off the court um, turnover, but what were you trying to get to, I guess, in that, in that moment? Yeah, I was trying to get his quick score, get her downhill. So we set a, kind of a flat screen. Um, so wanted her to get downhill, but that was, that was the idea. Get quick paint touch, turn around, um, try to get a stop, get a foul, advance it, and try to run the play. Was there any discussion about trying to go for a three maybe at the, for the last shot or just quick two and then... Yeah, um, just from we were in some late game situation we were working on this week, I wanted to get Liv to get downhill. We had 15 mm -hmm. seconds. She got there in about three seconds. So I was trying to go for two first before I went for the three. You have played small for much today, uh, obviously without Lauren, but also you know Kylie Watson was on the floor for a lot of the game. You know, how do you how does that kind of change the way you play when you need to you know kind of tinker with the lineup as much as you've had over these last few games and especially today? Yeah, I mean. I have to adjust a lot with what, what's going on. I felt like Maddie was doing a great job of being at the five is more of a threat, having four guards more of a threat on the floor. So I was trying to mix it up, throw them off a little bit. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I try not to be saying the same thing too long for them to get comfortable. Um, I thought KK's been doing a great job of being inside out, showing some different looks offensively, of trying to do some things offensively. Um, so that's why I switched it up a little bit. When they went to their two bigs, I went to back to my two bigs. Maddie, you obviously played you know, kind of a bunch of different roles today. Can you talk about you know, that versatility that, you know, kind of being on the court for all 40 minutes, but also not just you know, doing the same thing, kind of switching around depending on what you know, was needed by the team? Yeah, I mean, like Coach said, um, from Dara and Ebo, obviously they bring a lot to the table. Um, and without them, we have different players that have to step up every night. So just being that player, whatever Coach needs is whatever my team needs um, to just try and step up and do that. What could Lauren have brought to this particular game had she been able to go today? Um, I mean, our paint presence, we, they out um, scored us in the paint. Um, Evo does a great job of um, being a, punt, a, <clears throat> a great go-to scorer on the block. 
um, her size, her ability to rebound, and her defense, post defense. So, you know, we're, we're lacking that right now. But again, you know, I know that Nat, Kylie, Maddie are, are taking uh, more reps at that to try to help. Tom, you. not having Lauren and, and Dara in February, how difficult is it to try to figure out what this team can be this late in the season without two starters? Yeah, I mean, again, that's an adjustment. You got to, with part of the game, you know, you got to figure out a way to navigate regardless. And, you know, yes, injuries have plagued us um, the last couple of weeks, but again, adversity um, gives a lot of opportunity for, for our team. And so some, some players are, you know, we have some players that are really young, have never been in these moments. And some, you got to learn in the fire, unfortunately, but I know we're, we'll be better for it down the road. What, because, is, what is it about this team that you know? You, you guys can figure it out as you move forward. Oh, I mean, defensively, you know, again, being more locked in defensively, um, you know, offensively, we're going to get better. We're going to be better um, executing. We're going to, you know, we're, we're always working on us. We're always working on offensively, always working on taking care of the ball. So we're going to get better on both sides of the ball. And then the last one, Tyler. You mentioned Duke's maturity, and then you talked about the atmosphere a lot. I'm, I'm just curious, talking about the shooting in the fourth quarter, is some of that just not having been in a moment like that, and maybe that's why some of those shots didn't fall, or would you rule those things out? Yeah, I mean, again, you know, we have <clears> – <throat> there's sometimes where I have two freshmen, three sophomores, two sophomores on the floor, or, um, you know, two freshmen, one junior, three, you know. So a lot of a lot of the different lineups are players that have not been in this moment. You know, normally those moments were with Dara has been in this for, for five years in Ebo, obviously. But um, I think that's the credit to that. I mean, they – some of those shots in the fourth court, wide open. You know, we normally make those. So again, you just have to be in it. Um, you learn a lot, and just having the confidence to be in those moments. They're gaining that, even even with a loss, you're still gaining um, my trust. You know, they, they know that I trust them. Um, and those opportunities that are going to <clears throat> present themselves again, and they'll have been in those moments. So it's going to help us down the road. You go. Just give him one, give one more. Just, just give him one more. Has a timeline crystallized? I feel, I feel bad. Y'all waited. Has a timeline, thank you. Has a timeline crystallized on Lauren at all? And, and do you know that it's not season ending or anything like that? Yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm a, every day I'm, I'm just getting more and more feedback. So she's been working really hard um, with her rehab. You know, I have a great performance team. Um, so every day they'll just update me. So it's kind of day to day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.